working in a consultation with a client, every day he used to copy a data symbol around rotate it and fix its text. You can imagine all of the tedious tasks to do if he had so many different places to add his data symbol. Well, with some optimization techniques, we were able to simplify his life and save plenty of time. Do you want to know how we did it? So one of the first things that we did is convert this uh, data into a block, right? This symbol, because that way we will have only one piece of object that he could easily move and rotate around. So of course, the way we did it was selecting both of its objects and create a block using the B shortcut um, to create a block. So over here, of course, the name of the block was data symbol. And then, um, so I simply proceeded to create the block. So for the base point of the block, um, I had to be very strategic here and picked a base point that makes sense. Uh, so when inserting the block, it will be on the correct location. So that point was not over here on this block, but a little bit over here because he had to leave a space or a gap between the data symbol. So it would be something around here like so. So that way, when we placed the block, he could simply place it like that and still had a space over here. So that's one of the first things that we did, of course, to simplify my client's life, convert these symbols into a block. However, um, when he proceeded to copy, you know, this data symbol around, for instance, from this base point, and holding the control uh, key on the keyboard. And then he will, you know, proceed to copy it over here. Um, we could see that he still will need to use the rotate command to align his data symbol like so. So we also wanted to somehow simplify that process and add a parameter so that way the block could rotate automatically. Um, so the way we did it was uh, we added it a alignment parameter to his block. So the way we did it was double clicking on the block and clicking OK to access the block editor. So over here, we open it the authoring palette from the ribbon and then we were ready to add a parameter in this case the alignment parameter so we proceeded to do that and over here of course for my base point i needed to pick the same location of my block so it was over here so what i did was type 0 comma 0 comma 0 and press enter and boom it jumped to that exact location where my base point was. So at this point, I needed to pick a direction for my alignment. So I went up and click like so. So of course, at this point, the block was ready. So I simply close the block editor and save the changes. So now when my client needed to, let's say, uh, copy his block or move his block around, so from this um, base point, um, you can see that the block will align automatically like so. So if I also try it to this other one, again, the block will align automatically like so. So from that point, 
uh, we were making some progress. However, um, we saw the problem that the text wasn't looking or rotating the way it's supposed to be. So this is where we implemented, uh, let me undo this, control Z to undo, add a attribute definition to this block. So again, the way we did it in this case was we couldn't double click, uh, we could double click to open uh, this block like so. And we were again on the uh, block editor so we could modify our so first of all i checked that the text uh, the size so it was six inches so i could um, delete this text and add a attribute definition so the way i did it was use the shortcut att and then i proceeded to implement the information over here on the attribute definition dialog box. So for the tag, uh, this would be like an ID identification. Uh, so I said number of data. And then I copied that and for my prompt, I, I said enter number of data. And for the default, the default is important because when my client um, needed to insert this block, he most of the time, like 90% used the number two uh, because that represents two of data symbols, of course. So the default would be number two, but of course this could be changed in the future. The justification middle center will work and the style was arch, arch style so the text height number six inches that's fine and click ok so at this point i needed to specify a star point for my attribute i picked over here like so so at this point i finished modifying my um, block so what i did is save the changes like so so at this point um, nothing really, it looks like nothing really happened. However, uh, it was because we needed to somehow refresh this uh, block with the attribute. So the way we did it was using the A, uh, the A, the sync. So A, T, T, sync to somehow refresh again or update the attribute on this block so following the instructions what i did is of course uh, pick the select option and then selected the block like so and update the data yes so like so so we could see now the attribute and the beauty of this was that now uh, when my client uh, needed to change this number he could simply double click on it to update to a different number for instance three and so on so i'm gonna undo that uh, and the other um, benefit about adding an attribute to my client's block was that whenever he uh, copy or move his block like so he could now fix quickly the rotation of his uh, attribute using the T orient command. So the T orient will help to rotate his attribute simply again by selecting the block and uh, picking a rotation. Uh, so in this case, I did pick two points like so to, you know, rotate his attribute and have it nice and clean like so. So to simplify my client's life, of course, check some good practices when creating blocks. Cause right now you can see that we didn't worry or say anything about um, layers and properties of this block and 
the way we did it was again uh, open this block and go into the block editor and start inspecting and checking some of these objects right because if any of these objects are placed on the correct layer or on the incorrect layer sorry and incorrect properties it will bring problems in the future to my client so of course i first started with this and i noticed that this was a block actually so right there we had a problem we are having one block inside another block which of course will uh, bring a problem so i proceeded to explode that block uh, so it's now simply a polyline um, i continue and this was a hatch that it is on a, another layer and another color and so on so at this point i selected everything and make sure that was placed on the layer zero uh, following some block uh, good practices so whenever you are creating a block your objects should be placed on layer zero the color of course uh, by layer like so and if we open it uh, the property palette uh, we could keep checking some of the properties uh, so by layer that's fine by layer and so on so those were some good practices to follow and the idea is that when we save the changes to this block um, and now we place them on a correct layer let's say uh, we of course created a new layer right on our layer palette so let's say data symbol then we assign it a color let's say in this case color red like so so when i assigned the layer to this object or symbol over here from my pro uh, home and layer uh, palette over here so data symbol you can see that it automatically get the colors and properties of my layer and that is because again we uh, did make sure that our objects inside inside our block were on layer zero and by block of course um to um save this block let me fix first the text with the t-orient like so so we added this block to my client's block library so he could reuse this block in any of his future drawings right because right now um, if we just open simply a new drawing um, so let's say I'm gonna open this AutoCAD template and go to model space so there wasn't a way to reuse that block because we don't have that block still inside AutoCAD. So the way we did it was um, my client had a block library somewhere saved in his uh, computer. So for instance, over here, that's where he saved some of his uh, blocks. So I proceeded to copy the block that we just created with control C and then of course open my client's block library and paste it with control V. So of course I could place it over there like so and then I could simply close the block library and click yes. So at this point, uh, the way we uh, did uh, to make it accessible in any drawing was opening the blocks palette right here. So once we did that, uh, there is an option over here that says library. And so in order to add uh, his block, we needed to pick or click this option 
to add and find the dwg file that we just uh, had it so it was on there let me double check so the block library was under this path so uh, library over here so that's the block library of my client so once we did click open and then we went again to the block library looks like nothing is happening is happening but again you can see that the data symbol block is right there so this is nice because now in any drawing even though your block doesn't exist my client will have it available to simply insert it from the uh, blocks palette and uh, redefine block yes of course so at this point he could um, select or you know place the block like so and so as you can see on the command line um, the attribute was asking to enter the number of data so at this point my client could simply press 2 however there was a step that we could do to simplify this process which was uh, make AutoCAD to not ask for the input or the number for the attribute why because my client like I said 90% of the time he used the number 2 so we wanted it somehow to AutoCAD avoid asking this question and simply put the number 2 on it so the way we did it was of course first let me uh, change the layer to make it current over here so that way when we inserted the block it will come on the correct layer so again I'm gonna erase this block and now the the way we did it was use a system variable called ATT require so this option or system variable will um, avoid AutoCAD asking for the attribute number so if we press enter right now we set is set to one so if we set it to zero like so and now we try to insert the block again by clicking on it and again I'm gonna place it over here click you can see that it's not asking anymore to enter the data number which is nice so that's one step less that we need to worry about and I suggested to my client that there was an option over here to repeat the placement of this block so simply by checking on it and again trying to insert the block so he could simply click like so and keep adding some of his data uh, symbol very quickly and very easily right like so so um, to fix again all of these um, information or align the text he could simply use the t orient man and of course at this point select all of his blocks and then simply click two points on the screen to align his text like so these techniques were good but to ensure your attributes stay consistently horizontal catch me on the next video